Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you again uh, for joining today's webinar session. Uh, we really do appreciate you taking your time out of your busy day to join us. My name is Jasmine uh, Kapoor, and I'm a senior marketing manager here at Vistas and the host of today's session. Today's webinar topic is about the intelligent GSOC for today's corporate security and critical infrastructure protection demands. For today's session, we have Sid Kumar, who's the technical marketing engineer here at Vitsis, and Joe Leung, who is the product marketing manager at Microfocus. Before I turn over to our presenter, I just wanted to mention that if you have any questions, please feel free to write your questions in the designated GoToWebinar panel area, or a this might be a box on the side of your presentation. And if time permitting, we'll definitely um, we'll definitely get to your questions at the end of the webinar. And either way, if you have any other questions, we'll definitely respond to them after the session separately by email. Also, lastly, we are recording today's session, which will be posted online later this week. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, let us know. We'll be more happy to respond to them. Thank you again for taking your time. And now over to you, Joe, to present the next part of the presentation. Thank you, Jess Mates. Hello, everyone. Joe Leung here. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, so, first, let's uh, let's share some of the the challenges that we've heard from our, our customers, and hopefully, some of them will resonate with you. We live in a, a world with increasing and emerging threats. Uh, the other day, you know, last week, Frankfurt Airport, one of the busiest airports in Europe, was evacuated, and flights were delayed for about two hours due to a security slip caused by a security operator. And just a few days ago in the US as well, a ground crew employee managed to steal a commercial plane at Seattle airport and eventually crashed it. And in, in the private sector, back in April this year, someone gained access to YouTube headquarters and shot three people before committing suicide. So with the frequency and type of threats going up, the risks of oversight and false alarms increase correspondingly. But at the same time, there is an increasing demand for faster and better responses. So the good news is that there is a lot of data to help us accelerate effective actions. In addition to the additional CCTV surveillance, which generates lots of video data, we now have social media, for example, and sensors which can provide valuable data to help either identify or validate the threat. And the bad news is that the data volume, the data sources and the data types are far exceeding the human limitations to monitor, analyze and react to it in real time. Next slide, please. And so that's why Microfocus and Vistas joined forces to create the intelligent GSOC to help address these challenges that I just mentioned in the previous slide. So Microfocus Idol is an artificial intelligence platform that uses machine learning to identify trends, patterns, and relationships across diverse data types, such as video, image, text, and audio. It processes and analyzes data So your operators will be given real-time instructions tailored to the issue or threat at hand. So without further ado, let's see Intelligent g in action. Sid, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. Good morning, everyone. This is Sid Kumar from WITSIS. Um, uh, again, welcoming you to the uh, WITSIS Microfocus joint webinar on protecting corporate security and critical infrastructure. 
The general security workflow of an intelligent global security operation center begins with the auto detection of incidents that are coming via physical security systems such as CCTV, VMS, access control, or through integration with converged security systems such as big data, IoT, analytics, and social media. WITSIS will then apply specific business rules to filter and correlate these incidents before presenting them in the situation management module. And then this is the module where the operators can immediately respond to and mitigate any situation using standard operating procedures or action plan. And then finally, the reporting module here in the intelligent GSOC summarizes all the actions that are taken by the operator for further analysis. So I'm gonna give a demo today and uh, be able to highlight the joint capabilities between WITSIS and MicroFocus. And as Sid brings that up, I just wanna mention again, if you have any questions at all, about the demo or what's happening on the screen, definitely feel free to ask and we'll definitely respond to that after the demo session. Thank you. Go ahead, please. So WITSIS product is a complete web-based application that aggregates data from physical and converged security systems as mentioned before. What you're seeing right now in front of you is our situation summary module. This is a unified dashboard providing real-time access to a variety of situation types. In this particular split view, the operator has access to incoming situations that are created either automatically or manually, showing you in a list format, while also be able to view those situations on a map. So for today's webinar, I will be showcasing two use cases uh, demonstrating the joint solution capabilities of WITSIS and our partner today, MicroFocus. So when I select this situation, I can click on view and it takes me to our situation management window. Now this is the module where the WITSIS open architecture easily and seamlessly will integrate different legacy as well as new technologies, uh, including maps, floor plans, camera feeds, analytics, access control, and other sensors into one common centralized viewing area. Along with it, our geospatial and rules engine will automatically locate nearest cameras and present to the operator for quick verification. Now let's focus uh, on this particular use case. Uh, this is based on spatial recognition and video analytics to help identify a suspect who may be wandering outside a campus enterprise. Now this suspect could be an employee that was either let go or is a wanted individual by the police. And in this particular scenario, as a security officer is patrolling the area wearing a body cam, the video feed data coming into WITSIS is also passing through the MicroFocus idle platform, which then analyzes, processes the video, and tries to match it against an employee or an external database. If there is a hit, Idle sends that information to WITSIS, which correlates it and creates this situation for us. Now, WITSIS has alerted the operator with this new situation at hand, but can the operator be presented with some additional level of intelligence coming from Idle? So to speak more on that, I'd like to bring Joe into the conversation. Joe? Yeah, thank you very much, Sate. So what we see here is one of our analytics modules at work. So we've got face analytics here, and face analytics can do multiple things. Here we have a database of, you know, in this case, police and the police, and we can actually match, you know, the face uh, relative to a record, you know, in the police database. 
And what you see is that also if you look at the other faces being picked up and they are pixelated or, or masked for privacy protection here. So only the person has been identified so relative to the database, his face is visible. So you can imagine this particular information is being generated and then it's being shared across the campus security team here. And another thing that face analytics can do is it can do demographic analysis. So what we can look at is not just the face recognition, but other things that we can look at, right? Such as um, uh, gender or age group or ethnicity, for example. And what Sid is showing is a dashboard as well, right? So we can talk more about the dashboard. I think Sid, we're going to go to the event security demo. We're also going to talk about the dashboard, correct? We're going to have a dashboard there, correct? Yes. Yes. Well, let's just let's wait until the, the event security demo. We can talk more about the dashboard. So what you see here is ability to leverage all your data coming in. In this particular case, we're talking about body camps and being able to support any suspicious personnel that is on your campus is not supposed to be there. And uh, so thank you, Ed. I'll, uh, Sid, I'll hand it back to you and we'll talk more as we move to the next demo as well. Sure, thanks, Joe. So the operators um, can uh, be presented with additional details about the suspect, such as his recent criminal history, social media postings, Etc. that IDLE has looked into its uh, vast database. So as we heard from Microfocus, the uh, security operation team now has a competitive advantage by not only getting true situation awareness, but also a deeper understanding of the suspect activity in their environment. And now the operator can then use the action plans or the standard operating procedures to walk through the steps that are needed to effectively resolve the issue by either dispatching a police alert or sending a mass notification to employees and ensuring public safety. So our action plan is listed here. On the left-hand side, it's dynamic and configurable. As you saw when I selected yes, there was, there was more action plan and, and tasks that were shown. Now, when I click on send dispatch, this is the interface that we have with third party systems. So all in all, everything can be communicated via this single interface. Now, every action that the operator takes is automatically logged and presented in a situation detail report. This report is useful for auditing purposes as well as getting maximum traceability for a situation. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, parameters that are captured here in this report, action plans that were invoked, the viewing history, the assets involved. So there is a timeline of all the activities that were performed by the operator. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to focus on our second use case uh, for the day, which is, a, which is about an event protest that's happening outside the uh, MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. So let me just open that use case for you. This particular use case is based on using WITS's CSIM technology and idle text analytics to protect critical infrastructure and ensure public safety. So what you're seeing in this particular scenario is that an operator who is sitting in a GSOC is monitoring a event that's happening here in the MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. And at the same time, a protest is happening right outside the stadium. Now, because WITSIS can add a middleware connector to the RSS feeds, a situation like this gets created based off a Twitter keyword protest that uh, was uh, caught uh, using our technology. So you can see here, this is a Twitter keyword which says a protest is scheduled for game day. 
and uh, this is going to happen during afternoon and there is a radical group that is claiming to lead this protest so the operator now has to investigate this tweet further and as i mentioned before he discovers that there is a radical group that is claiming to lead the protest now to talk more about how witsis can aid security operators with additional intelligence i'd like to bring back joe again into the conversation so joe yeah thank you sir so what we're looking at here is let's maybe we first go to the dashboard if that's okay see if we can bring it up so as a security operator so obviously i i'm looking at the event preparation so i start monitoring the security scenario way before the actual event day right so this is a dashboard that helps me understand you know if i imagine i'm a public safety operator here and see what's going on in the city in advance so what's happening here is that i'm monitoring data sources from various places you know you can imagine news you can imagine news site or new broadcast or tweets all these data sources are getting fed into idle and with the sufficient intelligence capability what i can do is i can train the engine to automatically recognize information that belongs to a certain category right so i care about for example road hospitals or police or transportation any information that comes in it will automatically be sorted into the right categories that's one so we have different domains and then the different operators, you know, the police, for example, again, focus on the police uh, category of information, right? And then what we also monitor is the influx of data. And we also look at the pattern of incoming data traffic. So as we look at the traffic, for example, I don't normally see any spikes towards the weekend in terms of data volume under normal circumstances and if i start seeing spike and huge increase in data volume at certain time that i'm not expecting to see that i'll start escalating the information to the watch status that's why you have a green status you have the amber status and actually if it gets really bad you can go to a red status that is not showing here but it will automatically escalate so you know what domain information is coming in and also which domain you need to pay more attention to because we're seeing some irregular pattern of data traffic coming in right so that's the dashboard give you a very high level holistic view of certain areas that you just start focusing on and paying attention to and then as you can as Sip indicated, right, we're looking at, you know, many data sources, one of which is text analytics. We analyze text, so social media feeds from, from you know, the, the tweets, for example, and we're understanding certain words are trending here, like game day, Super Bowl, and uh, radical group, for example. So we start understanding from the tweets as to what's being talked about, what's trending, and also we understand some of the tweets are being tweeted out by certain individuals or groups and those individuals and groups are trending for example so we start collecting information in advance about what's going on here and then use that in our preparation for security measures joe do you also want to talk about um how um Idle can use text analytics based on this uh, report that just came in and um, help in plotting us suspect information um, on this map. Yes. Yeah. So what's happening is, for example, I'm monitoring the, the text analytics from social media like tweeters, right? And then I start going back and understand, okay, look, there is a a person right this with a police record who's been tweeting and has been the head of the radical room that we've been we started to monitor it. so we have an understanding of this particular person and a record of that radical group because that person has been tweeting out there it's, you know we find that out using text analytics and then we also understand that hey there's a license plate associated with this individual so with that 
as I am monitoring the CCTV feed and the cars pulling into the parking areas, I also recognize the license plate coming from video analytics now. So I'm reading with the license plate. I am cross-referencing those plates against a police database, for example. And then I understand, look, that particular license plate has been picked up, associated with this particular person that I've identified as the person that's been tweeting all the threats in so, uh, social media. And now I know that the threat has just translated from cyber space into physical space here. So I know this person who has been actually organizing and treating the threats out is actually physically present at the event with the identification of his vehicle in the parking area and the locations of where the license plate has been cited. So that is how we get different analytics to work together to give us a much fuller and valid picture of the actual threat that we face with and we can act accordingly. Thank you, Sid. Thanks, Joe. So as we heard from uh, our partner, the more information we have about a situation, the better equipped we are in terms of effectively managing that situation. So now when I had entered this keyword in the text box and sent that data to IDLE, IDLE processed that data, that unstructured data and returned us some valuable information in terms of uh, the guy who was, um, uh, the, the, the group that was leading the protest, there is actually someone associated with that radical group and there is more information about that person and he is spotted uh, near um, the stadium in the parking structure. So as an operator, I have more um, understanding about the threat level. I can go through my action plans and um, I can certainly select yes, which brings up another action plan. And now I can contact the um, agencies, law enforcement guards on um, uh, around the, the stadium and provide this information to them before anything a mishap happens and then obviously ensure public safety. The other uh, aspect um, of our product that I wanted to uh, highlight is our enterprise business intelligence dashboard. Now this is a visualization and advanced reporting tool with performance-based metrics that can help senior management analyze and assess their enterprise-level security operation from a risk as well as a threat perspective. Using these uh, charts and panels, uh, management can get actionable and intelligent insights that they would want to pursue and strategize and also be able to understand if the company or organization is complying with regulatory policies. The charts and panels are configurable and um, specific to your needs and requirements. So overall, uh, WITSIS and Microfocus uh, jointly add value by simplifying situation management increasing operator efficiency, standardize, standardizing uh, security workflows, and finally adding an additional layer of intelligence. That's all from me from the demo. I'm gonna go back into our PowerPoint, PowerPoint now. As that slide shows, jumps right back up. So over to, to Joe. To Thank add. you, guys. Yes. So uh, just to share some success stories that we have, we meaning this is a micro focus, have worked on together. And these are actual intelligent GSOC deployments. And the, the first one we're looking at is a smart transportation application in Auckland, New Zealand. And uh, so in this particular case, uh, some of the key challenges for Auckland Transport is they want to, they need to enable sa a safe city solution, right? To be predictive in terms, instead of being reactive to it. So they felt like they were being way too reactive to things. They needed to have a, a way to, 
to preempt some of the problems that they they were seeing. And also they want to deploy video analytics to support safety and well-being of the citizens, right? Because it's part of the, the future cities initiative by the government then. And they need to also monitor a large surveillance camera network and, and a lot of different data inputs. So they've got all the these issues there, some of which are very similar to the ones that we, we talked about earlier. And so after the deployment, some of the results that you can talk about is they're running about 20 video analytics in real time that enables the staff to respond to issues and and you know to support about 1.4 million citizens, right? And make it safer on the road and enhance their the traveler's experience, if you will. And so it's also to also enhance the, you know, or enable, I should say, the accurate vehicle identification and scene analysis using traffic, you know, so they can start in, uh, working on traffic violation, incident and hotspot detection. So with hotspot detection, they can provide, you know, heavy transport or trucking options to operators in real time. And also an integrated ticketing system with insight on travel times, patterns, trip frequencies, and demographics that allow city planners to improve the services there. So that's what's happening uh, with the solution in Auckland. And another one that we're seeing that's in the United States, a state agency, they have initiative to reduce bridge and overpass collisions with overheight vehicles, such as big trucks coming through. So the system employed, it automatically detects overheight vehicles in real time from live video streams and issues warning to the driver. Yeah. And the third one is in the, the private sector, is a global electronics maker. And the, this particular customer has a large number of buildings and campuses and assets spread across the globe. And so each one is kind of, a, vulnerable to security threats and security you know safety breaches so the core requirements were to focus on monitoring cctv cameras to automatically identify events of interest so events can include perimeter violations overcrowding loitering illegal parking and after hours movement amounts you know many other different scenarios that they wanted to monitor and upon detecting these events, an alarm is sent through to the global team who can then respond appropriately. So there's a couple of deployments we have actually done together. And uh, so with that, I'll hand it back to Jasmeet. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, it's just great, Joe and Sid, for walking through how the intelligence you saw really simplifies situation management. And again, if you have any questions, we had a few questions that came in. If you have any question you want to ask right now, there's a question pane on your uh, should be on your screen. Definitely ask a question. I'll pull it up as we look at the time. Uh, so we have uh, some really interesting questions that have come in. Uh, first for Joe, uh, I see you have you know facial recognition. What about you know voice recognition or any other analytics? What's uh, Idle capable of doing? Hmm, uh, that's a very good question actually. So Idle itself is an integrated analytics platform powered by artificial intelligence right so our approach is very different from some other vendors out there we we just don't do video by itself or text by itself or in this case the questions related to audio right analytics we do all of them in integrated fashion within the same platform because we see you need all the data you need to actually get a complete picture of what's going on, right? Give you the holistic awareness of the situation. So going back to the question, voice recognition. Yes, we, we do speech analytics as part of the idol, as I just indicated. And some of the key capabilities are, for example, speech to text. It converts spoken speech to a text transcript, which you can use uh, another module of idol, text analytics to perform text analysis to understand you know, concepts and relationships and patterns, right? And so we also can do speaker segmentation identification, so I can identify the speakers in certain, uh, in spoken, you know, words, you know, so whatever it speaks, we can identify so yeah, the person who's spoken. And uh, also speech, we've got language identification, we can identify the language that's that's being spoken. And also we have 
audio security that identifies the common audio threats, for example, you know, a gunshot, we can recognize that gunshot and tell you the location and when and uh, it happened, for example. So you have audio sensors that can be put into place to, to provide additional layer of detection when it comes to certain threat, audio threat signatures. So uh, there's a couple of things that we can do with the voice or audio analysis here. That's great. Uh, I guess next question is for Sid. You know, people have heard PSIM quite a bit, uh, but you know, it's a bit different. We're talking about CSIM here. So what's the difference between PSIM and CSIM? I'm glad that question was asked, uh, Jazz. Um, so we did mention CSIM on uh, our slide, but uh, PSIM is also an industry acronym. PSIM was actually coined by WITSIS and it stands for Physical Security Information Management. So integrating data and events coming from physical devices, such as VMS, access control, CCTV, et cetera, and trying to make sense out of it. CSIM, on the other hand, stands for Converged Security and Information Management. CSIM is actually the evolution of PSIM, which extends beyond physical security to include events from big data, IoT, analytics, social media, to give operators a comprehensive situation of a missed picture. Yeah, it kind of led to the, issues, the next question. I'll add on to this piece to what you just added. So if I want to ask specifically, you know, who really has the integrations and you know, and how this platform works. So the Vista season platform integrates and correlates everything that comes into it. So there are third-party applications. One of them, in this case, we're talking about is micro-focus and the big data analytics that's coming through uh, what Joe was talking about, big data and video analytics and scene analytics, you name it. Uh, but we have over 350 plus integrations uh, in, our, in our library. So it's not just you know, big data or video analytics. We also could do camera systems, building management systems, you name it. So as a use case comes up, we're able to adapt quickly or build the integration fairly quickly based on your needs and what your services are. Um, the next question actually is for Joe. Uh, it's more specific to how do you kind of purchase Idle, how do you make it all work? Uh, with all these analytics, you know, being part of Idle, as you spoke about video, scene, rich media, et cetera, do I have to buy them all in one purchase or how does that all work? Yeah, so thank you, just mate. So these are modules, right? While technically the integrators work together, but they can be purchased separately. So, for example, one of our customers, you know, we'll just talk about Auckland Transport. They decided to deploy scene analytics and license plate recognition in the first phase of their smart city initiative. So scene analytics basically analyzing a physical space, right, a perimeter or certain secure zone. You, you know, you, you monitor people entering that zone or not, or you can talk about monitoring things, asset protections, so things supposed to be there, how come it's gone, so it triggered an alarm, or things not supposed to be there, how come it's there. So, so, so physical space analytics, the scene analytics, and the license plate. So these are separate modules that, that can be stacked on each other. Can you imagine you just have a Lego block, they work together, but they don't have to be together to work. That's one aspect of it. And uh, so you've got, you know, Auckland Transport, they talk about the scene analysis and uh, license plate recognition first in the first phase. In the second phase, they're talking about incorporating social media analytics, right, to really harness the power of the public to further improve the system. So these things can be phased in and depending on what you need to address first, we can have this individual module deployed separately and then as new modules get plugged in, they'll start working together. Thank you. Awesome, Joe. Uh, for Sid, so what type of customers need a CSIM and, and, and why? Uh, to understand, you know, the people who are on the call, trying to understand, you know, are they too small, are they too big, or what, how, do, how does the CSIM work in that sense? Yeah, Jazz, uh, that's a really good question. And I think um, as companies are evolving, uh, companies are trying to integrate multiple systems um, into their um, existing platform. So, Customers that have multiple disparate systems and want to make sense of massive amount of data that's coming through these systems, physical or converged in their environment, will uniquely benefit from the WITSIS CSIM open architecture. Companies could be big or small, but if you're planning to scale, uh, the WITSIS architecture can help you uh, accomplish that goal. And these are 
are also the customers that are looking to be vendor or hardware agnostic and looking to add new technology in the future. So I feel that if uh, customers are looking to use, utilize their legacy as well as add new technology in the future, they have to expand, um, understand better situation management, which the CSIM is the uh, platform to go. Yeah, and kind of a, for Joe, you know, I was coming up as questions were coming in. Uh, for Joe, is you know, what kind of industries will the, will the intelligence stock or is it capable? I know you mentioned offline transport and you know two other unnamed customers that you know from a transportation point mm -hmm. of view or state local and a big enterprise. So what type of industries or verticals that will be really tailored for the intelligence stock and how's it scale? Yeah, so it actually cuts across <laughs> many different industries. So what I can explain to you is obviously people who need to be concerned about security and safety, right? So we see a lot of public agencies, right, you know, using this capability, you know, Auckland Trans Auckland Transport is one of them, obviously, and other agencies. In other agencies that uh, we see using analytics, for example, uh, police forces out there, right? So that's one aspect of it. And in other industries, you know, normally you see industry with large campuses, right? So the, the security operator would need to, you know, secure the the place to protect the staff, for example. So, so these are uh, the prof typical profiles, right? That uh, are looking for solutions like this. Is you know any industries with large corporate campuses out there, and there's a big job to protect them. Or you have a global operation, you have many different campuses on a worldwide basis, and you need an intelligent GSOC to help you monitor and protect all these different large campuses scattered across the globe and then obviously the public agencies that we just talk about that's great joe i mean as you mentioned you know at going it's uh the intelligence talk is really flexible and capable of handling multiple different types of industries different types of customers it really depends on what the use case of that of the customer is or your people who are on the call if you're looking at social media and looking at other analytics and how to integrate that and better response situations with your analog systems, camera systems, et cetera, this is where a full service solution where you're finally able to do that rather than having a multiple siloed uh, elements. And it kind of leads into the question for Sid. So why should customers, you know, choose VidSys over the competition? You know, the competition being other PSIMs, uh, obviously VidSys has, you know, evolved beyond PSIMs and CSIM. Um, you know, there are other competition pieces that are just VMSs and other things. How does that work? Yeah, so Jazz, so Vitsis has been around for almost 15 years now, and I think that is a uh, testament to our pioneering CSIM and PSIM technology. Vitsis also owns one of the largest connector libraries for third-party integration, uh, almost um, around 350 connections we can do today with uh, ease. So it really will empower the end user because of our open architecture. And I think uh, that's why what's this um, is chosen by customers over our competition. Yeah, to echo, you know, to add on what you're, you're saying, you know, with the competition, you might do a lot of PSIMs or other just VMSs who are saying, or video management systems, who are saying they're more complete, who are able to really handle situation management, but at the end of the day, they really can't. Uh, but they also, what they, they force you to do is rip, or, rip and replace your entire infrastructure you have today. So they want you to buy within their own brand. Whereas, as Sid mentioned earlier, we're agnostic to what brands you have. It doesn't matter to us, we'll have a connector built for that, or we already have in our library. So really what we give you is the power is, you can pick the best of breed for each type of technology, be it cameras, active control, you know, big data analytics using you know, micro focus, and other platforms or, or other technologies, we're able to do that. Other systems don't let you do that. And that actually is a big issue we found for some of our customers, that they have to deal with one vendor for the entire project and spend a lot more money just to rip and replace what they have just to make it look a little nicer in that sense. But we're fully capable and we integrate across multiple different platforms. And we've done it globally too. So we're not just in you know one country only, we're in 15 plus different countries and you know, as the integrations keep growing, it grows constantly. Uh, and working with MicroFocus, the IELTS team, we're able to better respond to what your, your needs are. Um, I guess, you know, look at 
time, you know, the question time is really done. So I'd like to, if you have anyone else has questions, definitely feel free to ask, uh, feel free to ask me or, you know, ask on the, the question pane. But we'll move on to the next part. Uh, thank you again for all your questions. It's really great. Uh, next month is, I'm, a, I'm assuming a lot of people will know or have heard about it, you know, as is, uh, or it's now become Global Security Exchange, or GSX. It'll be next month in Las Vegas. Uh, this is a, one of the biggest um, security conferences in the United States that occurs. So GSX is September 23rd to 27th. Uh, Vitsis and Microfocus will have a booth on the show floor this year. So we'll be at booth 571. So definitely feel free to stop by. You will hear about it over time as we get closer. And you can definitely uh, schedule private meetings with the Vitsis and Microfocus team. You can definitely talk you know, in person with Joe and Sid and others and really get a good sense of the intelligence stuff in your use cases. So if you come ready with your use cases, we're really happy to talk to you about it. Uh, but definitely uh, reach out to us if you're going. If you're not able to go, we'll definitely we love to have a set of webinars with you. And just go to the next part. And really, the last part is really honestly, thank you again for everyone who showed up today. Uh, we really appreciate taking your your time. I you know I heard as I was monitoring throughout the entire webinar, there's some technical issues that happened with go to webinar. People weren't able to quickly sign in. Very sorry, some issue with some time zone issue as well. But regardless, this webinar is being recorded, so we'll definitely share it. Uh, I, I will personally share it out to everyone uh, after the webinar once I get it uploaded onto our website. But again, thank you so much for your time. My email is there. So this is Jasmine, again, the Senior Marketing Manager at Bitsys. My email is kapoorj at bitsys.com. Uh, you don't need to write down. Again, you'll probably get another email from me in the next few hours, or by tomorrow at least with the video and you can watch it. And also we'll include information about the Intel and GSOC so you can download the, our brochure that we have. And if you wanna have you know, a more private one-on-one -on -one meeting with us, definitely reach out to me or reach on our website. We have a web form and I personally will monitor. So if you will actually, we'll talk to you know, our famous folks like you know, Sid and Joe. They're more than happy to talk to you and go more in depth in the demo. So again, thank you for your time. This is being recorded, so I'll definitely send it out. And if you're going to ASUS or, or GSX now, you're going to need to get used to saying GSX, uh, definitely catch us there at Booth 5701. Thank you again. Have a really great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, bye.